Hi, my name is Jo Neville and I work for West Country Rivers Trust. Today I'm going to be taking you on a whistle stop tour of a little piece of work that we've been doing alongside Devon County Council and Devon's local nature partnership. So this piece of work is a review of the evidence of the likely impacts that climate change is going to have on Devon's natural environment. We've been looking at some of the key risks and also some of the headline actions that we might be able to take. This work will feed into Devon's Climate Emergency Task Force, which Emily's just been talking to you about. So, as Richard's probably described earlier, climate change is likely to re result in warmer, wetter winters on average, hotter, drier summers, and also an increase in extreme events like flooding and drought. And all of these will have an impact on the habitats, the species and the landscapes that make Devon and the calm catchments so special. So some habitats and some species are likely to be able to adapt better than others and this is likely to result in a change in the range of some of the habitats and species and potential loss and fragmentation of others. So for instance, upland oak woods and the blanket bogs of Exmoor and Dartmoor are likely to reduce in size as the climate conditions become less suitable for them. And species like salmon and trout will probably become more susceptible to things like parasites and disease. And if we have significant drought events, that makes it really difficult for them to migrate upstream to their spawning grounds. On the flip side, species like the small red-eyed damselfly and the cattle egret that have recently started moving across from Europe are likely to be able to expand their ranges. So, the things like the patterns of the breeding, feeding, hibernation and migration are all likely to start to change. And this might result in things like a mismatch of relationships between things like predators and their prey and also between pollinators and their plant species. It's also likely to result in increase of non-native species and some of these might become invasive and affect our native flora and fauna. Our habitats and species are also going to have to contend with things like a decrease in air quality, changes to soil, coastal habitats are going to have increased erosion from storm events and potential higher tides, and also freshwater are going to have to cope with things like algal blooms due to the warmer weather, and also a flush of sediments and soils from increased rainfall and sudden flooding, flash flooding events. So that gives you just a little snapshot of some of the impacts that might be coming. Obviously this is a huge topic, a lot of research being done on it at the moment. And you can kind of get lost in a rabbit hole of a bit of a doomsday scenario and wonder what on earth can we do about it. But another aspect of the project has been looking at some of the headline actions that we can take. And through this project, through other projects with West Country Rivers Trust and Connecting the Calm, it's been really, really inspiring and encouraging to see all the different ideas, the ambitions and the actions that are already being taken to address this challenge, really locally, right across Devon and then wider across the UK. I think we all agree that we're going to have to take some bold and difficult decisions, but also that there is a role in this for everyone. There's going to need to be some big landscape scale thinking, we're going to need to restore high quality habitats and we're going to need to restore connectivity right across the different landscapes of Devon and the Calm Catchment. And this is where things like river corridors become really, really important. So for connecting the Calm, looking at restoring some of the wetland mosaics right up at the top of the headwaters and the springline mires and then restoring connectivity right down through the agricultural habitat and into the urban areas. So, for projects like this, it's incredibly important that everyone gets involved, and that must include locals. People need to be outside, they need to be caretakers, they need to care about their environment and know about their environment. We need to have knowledge sharing between the projects and also between the local people, and we need everyone to get outside, get muddy, get involved. There's going to be all sorts of talks this evening, and hopefully some of those will inspire you to become involved and help out. So, get outside, have fun, and thanks very much for watching.